In less than 12 short months, Gretzky has risen to internet fame inside the casino gambling niche. 152,000 subscribers on YouTube, 159 on TikTok, 451 on Instagram, but Bretsky isn't a real name. My name is Welty. It rhymes with Bretsky, but it's harder to read. The W thing throws people off. But in this video, my goal is to find out who is Bretsky and what explains the sudden content success. Further, could the Bretsky path to notoriety be repeated? Is there a strategic formulaic execution one could do? And what are the mathematics behind it? Or the odds, as my fellow gamblers would say. By the way, I can like feel it through the camera. Somebody's like, I need you to pull this. I'm gonna pull this once and, and then we're just gonna move on with the video. Nice. I've got some answers. I put a strange amount of interest and research into this, but I have for you now the best Bretsky breakdown you'll find yet. Bretsky is Brett Stern. He's got Facebook images as a teen navigating some slopes that explains the ski in Bretsky. I'm 26 years old. He should be exactly my age or very near it. He was part of my same school graduating class timeline. He did indeed graduate with a bachelor's level management degree from Eisenberg School of Management, UMass Amherst in 2020. Brett's LinkedIn reports a few sales jobs post-university, three years selling for a family operated business in the janitorial supplies industry, maybe why some of his gambling references are analogies to trash. I found this garbage walking in here at $200. Shout out Encore, best free garbage removal service in the area. Next job held for two years selling laundry equipment and finally a season as a sales exec in healthcare. Then comes 2023 when he gets momentum as a content creator enough supposedly to allow him to quit his day job. So far, we haven't found anything that would indicate why he has unusually large bankrolls to work with on slot machines. Some people speculate that Bretsky's bankroll comes from a 2023 WSOP main event cash. I'm not totally sold. According to WSOP's player profile for Brett Stern, he's got six career caches dating back to 2019, none of which is really all that significant until he plays the 2023 WSOP main event, which remembers a $10,000 buy-in. They report a 1,275th finish, equaling a $15,000 cash. My opinion is that 15 grand still doesn't account for the scale at which he's willing to lose for the views. Just months later in 2024, a few thousand dollar loss on one video doesn't seem to even phase him. Second common postulation would be that he comes from a family of wealth. Maybe he's on his parents' payroll. Maybe he's related to Howard Stern or the late David Stern or Stern Stern. Oh, you don't know Stern Stern? Neither do I. I made it up. But surely there's somebody out there with Stern as both names. Anyway, Brett has someone on Facebook listed clearly jokingly as his father. Brett's real mother is active on Facebook. It doesn't appear the father is. It took me a while to identify the real father through Facebook, but I was able to find his name as Steven Stern. I don't have a lot of information because he seems to keep a low profile. I have an educated guess on where Steven and Kathleen are living, and I know I, I'm feeling a little uncomfy at this stage, so I, I'm not gonna give away precise detail on what I found because I have respect for these people. But in the interest of determining Brett's situation, I dug enough to find the parent's home is worth about 1.2 million. Their purchase price was different though, it's about two thirds of that. Come to your own conclusions on this part. My experience is lots of people live in homes that they can't afford, and I'm not saying that they can't. In fact, I would guess that they can. But a $1.2 million home doesn't necessarily indicate wealth. It certainly doesn't indicate whether or not a set of parents would fund a son's gambling habit in the interest of him gaining followers. The journalist part of me still doesn't feel like I have a sufficient answer, so what if I shift my nerd focus here onto actual numbers, or as Brett would say, the numbers. Maybe the answer is easier than I've been making it. Maybe for Brett, the content itself is the money printer. I'm about to show you a spreadsheet. This took me hours, okay? I probably could have had an AI do this for me, but deep down, I'm pretty old school on a lot of things. So I sat down and did it myself. I watched every, every Brett Ski short to current day. 297 YouTube shorts in total. I took notes on which casino game he played, how much he reports to have won or lost within the short, 
whether or not there is clear visual evidence the financial result is truthful, and how many views each short has received to current day. Before we nerd out on the statistics, let me cover some things that I found noteworthy. Mom and Dad ended up appearing one time each, shorts numbers 170 and 181. This makes me feel better about finding out who these people are uh, because they've done so willingly on Brett's platform. I think it's also noteworthy he has a few shorts promoting merch drops and claims at least one of the drops sold out. I don't have a way to get numbers on what type of profits he sees from this, but just take a mental note. Monetizing t-shirt sales are within reason for someone who would want to do as Bretsky has done. He also eventually starts kick streaming and he receives donations from especially supportive viewers. Multiple income streams can add up quickly, but we can't know how potent or sustainable those forms of income are for him. But we can get numbers on some stuff. Here's a quick enough synopsis on my Bretsky YouTube shorts spreadsheet. I guess he's a masterful gambler even though he claims to lose a lot. As closely as I can calculate, after 297 shorts, the net result is a $16,587 profit. Now, obviously he references gambling off camera and he does longer form vlogs, edited video uploads on YouTube. You could make the argument he's primarily sharing successful highlights through the YouTube shorts medium. That's fine. Look, whether or not Bretsky is an overall successful gambler is not the point of this video. I just find it noteworthy that while yes, he loses more often than he wins, some of his shorts wins are so massive that they far out earn the losing. When it comes to showing proof or not in the shorts, I personally believe him completely in every instance. It's my gut telling me he's not making any portion of it up, but we're trying to figure out if his rise is repeatable and you could make it up. These palm review crumpling the dollar bills, opening it back up videos he does, you could do a series of them. Wouldn't cost you a thing, and you could hope to fake it into making it. For the record, among the videos he does not have proof for, he reports a net profit of over six thousand dollars. Six grand of the sixteen grand is just hand reveal style, I have to take your word for it videos. The true hack here is if you can gather a consistent audience large enough that the view revenue out earns each potential gambling loss. Thankfully, I've done a few of these myself. Let me take you behind the curtain. My highest performing scratch off short has 7,800 views and earned $1.24. My one slot short did 8,600 views earning $1.31. Maybe I should do more slot shorts. <laughs> These revenues are basically identical per view, this amount here. We can estimate Bretsky's per short view revenue is very close to this. So I inserted a formula into the spreadsheet to tell me what each short likely paid based on the view total. Again, to review this quickly, in total he should have generated somewhere around $5,991 off of shorts alone. I'm not talking about all his YouTube money, I'm talking about just the shorts. Most of them are going to be generating less than $10 each. He's broken a million views on a short four or five times, and in those cases he can expect to earn several hundred dollars per. But typically an individual short is not going to pay back the result if it's one of his quick $100 loss videos. Welcome back to Lose $100 as quick as possible, episode seven. We're at Wheel of Fortune doing $100 spin. Wow, that was quick. What my math does not account for is the money each short generates off YouTube. When he puts the same exact video up on TikTok and Instagram, he's earning additionally. He will also earn additionally on past shorts into eternity. An advantage of being a content creator is that you invent your own digital real estate with passive income potential. You could flip the result. Instead of him earning $16,000 over 297 shorts, he could have lost $16,000 over the same shorts. He's still gonna be left over with a library of content that over time can't do anything other than earn for him. My final personal consideration would be one of what is a subscriber worth? We haven't talked about that yet and I'm leaving that up for debate. Comment below what you think. We, we can have a back and forth in the comments about this as well. What is a long-term subscriber worth? I think they're of pretty high value if you're personal brand building, especially in your 20s. In Brett and my cases, we've got potentially decades available in developing mutually beneficial relationships 
with people who meet us online. In that case, you could view losing gambling videos as nothing more than an ad budget. Let me know what you all think, because what I'm looking at in studying Bretzky is a formula that could indeed be pretty easily replicated. Better yet, through enough iterations, somebody out here is going to try to be the next Bretzky, and this lucky soul is going to pull seven slot machines, and on their eighth, they're going to hit a life-changing jackpot, and in that case, the social media game might not even be necessary for them. They they will have already won. That person isn't me. I've already taken more than eight attempts in my life, and my break hasn't come yet, but you can help me. If you found this video interesting, you ought to subscribe. If you found me because you already know Bretzky and you find Bretzky interesting, you ought to subscribe. I'll be doing my own little spin-off versions of trying to be the next Bretzky in some capacity. Speaking of which, right now I have a song and music video out called Scratch. I'm going to put it in the outro here. At the end, I use a Bretzky engagement strategy, including a free giveaway. Literally, no one has taken advantage of my giveaway offer. I recommend you do. Check it out. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time on Welty.